Hey guys, cheers Mike, how are you? I think you're Jeff, I should say, sorry, Jeff, and Mad Kiwi, cheers guys. Uh, I think, I think we're, we have functional equipment, but we're going to find out. This is a, this is a shakedown run of some uh, changes on the stream. Let me know how the audio and the video is coming across. Hopefully good, except for, I'm sorry, the furnace is going full tilt today and I can't shut it off because it's cold outside. But uh, what I've got is I finally got myself a stream deck. And the idea was is so I can stream live to you guys here from the workbench um, whenever possible. And basically just with a quick button press go live and just hang out while I'm working on projects or today like I have a few odds and ends to do today we've got to package up a couple kits and just sort through some stuff cheers Armando good to see you and um, yeah the only thing that I'm having trouble with maybe if any streamers show up or watch the replay of this maybe you can help me but the chat functionality in the uh, Elgato stream deck meh dead I just get yellow triangle no matter what I do I can't post any chat messages which is really kind of sucky because that was what I really wanted to this to work <coughs> excuse me but I'll live with that um, I'm able to at least switch between scenes and I can mute and I can do all kinds of things like actually play audio when super chats and stuff come in and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy um, I'm really happy with where things are headed here buffering bad yeah sorry that's not on my end that's definitely on your end I think can't do much for you uh, that's the YouTubes such as life been down that road a few times it's a uh, hit and miss whether their servers are good to what area. I have a lot of problems with the Chicago server here, but um, 
been doing some reading. Um, I don't know why this came into the shop, but uh, been learning about some MicroPython. Um, been trying some MicroPython examples on the PyPico. Uh, we should solder this up today if we have some time. And then uh, I've been testing out this Wemos 32 Lite. Uh, this is this is crazy. Check this out. Have you guys seen this microcontroller? Most underrated microcontroller I've come across in a long time. Cheers, Andy. Good to see you, buddy. Um, I I don't know how I missed these things, but I just grabbed three more of them. They seem to be kind of rare, but um, lipo charging and everything on board an ESP32, not not canned uh, 32, but doesn't matter for me for my uses. And uh, I was able to get this up and going with MicroPython in no time. Uh, it worked just fine. It was super easy, and uh, I'm pretty sure it'll work with the Arduino IDE too. Uh, we'll give it a try. Seems to be streaming okay to the UK. Awesome. Thank you, Andy, for the stream report. That's helpful. Um, hopefully it stays that way for us. And... Oh, yeah, a lot of wireless. Uh, you should be... I wonder how many Starlink sats there are in, down in the southern hemisphere floating over you by now. You should be able to get in on the beta of the Starlink stuff. It's working pretty awesome for anybody that I know that's on it. Something you might want to check out. It is kind of a little bit pricey, but uh, not really for my area. But this is what I worked on last weekend. Might as well show you guys. I was kind of more or less offline. If you're in my Discord, you would have seen the git commits on these. I was printing these out of TPU. Um, these are uh, calling them toe beans. My wife calls the the dogs uh, toes toe beans. Uh, these actually slip over his claws. Uh, he's 12 and he's uh, 80 plus pounds. Um, he's a big uh, old English sheepdog and he has trouble on my hardwood. He's had always had trouble, but it's that much harder when he's 12. To Dogs aren't made for hardwood floors. Their, their claws slip. So this slips over it and gives some bite, some purchase on the, on the hardwood. I actually purchased some um, commercial ones of these. Uh, 60 bucks US for one set of the darn things. So TPU to the rescue and I, I went through I think 10 or 15 iterations until I got the length right where it doesn't ride up on his foot and the only drawback is his TPU isn't terribly grippy it's it needs it needs to be a little bit better um, unfortunately there's nothing I can do with that so what I've done is I've painted them with Plasti Dip um, I don't have them here these are just the ones fresh off the printer uh, and that gives it really good bite on the hardwood, and they're working great. Um, pretty cool. I haven't even gotten the uh, the commercial ones to show up yet. Uh, when they show up, we'll uh, we'll give them a try and compare them. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. The they're vet approved, and everybody's happy. The tricky is just making sure that they're not uh, not gonna ride up and hurt his cuticles. So yeah, fun. Waiting for fiber, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> fiber's kind of a bugger. I'm lucky I've got fiber here, but honestly, um, the fiber here is so damn slow. They cap the speeds so that they don't have to stress their equipment or spend money on equipment. I'm only getting uh, 100 meg down, 25 meg up, and I'm paying through the nose for it. Um, hell, Starlink can do that. So, some yeah, it's kind of crazy. The market demands, but. Um, another fun thing today, this uh, this I'm done with for now, but um, I put all my EEPROM supplies in here because I just actually put in an order for a, a, an EEPROM programmer. I've got a project where I want to do a couple of repairs, two projects, and I needed a, a proper EEPROM programmer. I already have the interface here and I have lots of old EEPROM stuff. You guys might recognize some of these if you've been... Uh, if you were into uh, borrowing satellite signals back in the day and borrowing satellite signals as well, this is 24LC256 EEPROMs. Um, you used to have to double these up on uh, the AVR boards to give it a little bit more memory. But uh, yeah, it's fun stuff. Uh, I don't, not advocating for stealing satellite signals. <laughs> Uh, cheers Mike, hopefully the audio and the video is coming across good. 
um, we have a project we need to do. Um, uh, just let's, um, yeah, let's do that. I have chores that need done. Um, first up, two orders came in. Uh, one order last night for a rescue kit. And um, I thought, why not be streaming while I go through the motions of packaging that up and getting it ready to go. So you guys have seen the rescue project on this channel, the ESP8266 search and rescue tool. So this was ordered from Norway. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Send that out. Get it packaged up first. The kits are all done. I still have a couple in stock, but I need to make some more. So maybe... Maybe tomorrow I'll make some more. So the only thing we need to do is just see. I like including a bunch of stickers um, in with the kits. And in some of these, I've I've gone ahead and already packaged them up and already have lots of stickers. But I just want to make sure. Um, the rescue kits are a little bit pricey, right? They're they're not the cheapest thing. They're uh, 100 and, 110 bucks, I think. So um, somebody's going to buy it from me and... Might as well try and make sure that they have all kinds of nice goodies. So that should be fine for stickers, I think. And then what we'll do, what I've got as well, is um, let's have a look. Let's let's find them a bonus. Let's see what we got with rescue kits. I like I like lots of bonuses. That'll do. Got, what color should we do? Um, what camera? Uh, these are these are just C920s um, that are hooked up. Um, one right up here on the ceiling, and then this one is just a C920 on a on a boom arm. And they they do okay. They're not great. They're not great at all. But it's what I've got. Um, what color should we give them? Um, you guys post in chat. Which one would you want to get? I'm partial to the black, but that red looks pretty awesome. Who doesn't love a PCB ruler, right? And PCB Way is kind enough to support this channel with monetary support. and They support lots of makers and stuff, and they send me stuff like this so I can distribute it out. But, yeah, we need to pick a color. We've got to vote for red. And then, um, what we'll do... These. So this is how I just keep all my shipping supplies like a Dassault. So. I need a couple of those. One of those. And then I've got all my envelopes down in the bottom. And I just save all my bubble wrap and foam and stuff that I get from all my shipping stuff. And then in here, I might do a video on how I do the kits, but then... I do these uh, Canada Post. These are free. You just have to go on the Canada Post website and then you print out the shipping label and it slides right in and these are adhesive. So we're going to need a couple of those. So we've got two orders. We've got, I think the other one is a Roomba. Um, a Roomba virtual wall we need to package up too. We've got red, 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 black. Red because it goes faster. <laughs> uh, all right, sold. Red it is. I forgot to make note of his name from Norway, but um, customer from Norway, you are getting a red PCB ruler. Compliments of the live chat. So we'll put those aside. We'll do a nifty red one. And we'll. What I like doing is just get on camera might be helpful so things are packaged up I'm pretty careful with how I've got everything laid out in there the OLED and whatnot and it's it's pretty safe there's not usually any major problems um, I haven't had any shipping problems yet but the, the trick is to keep it thin um, to keep the shipping charges down because shipping from Canada is exorbitantly expensive so, but if you keep it down under, I think it's four centimeters in height, um, basically a thick letter, the rates are a little bit more reasonable where I can afford to send these out. So, and then we'll do that. 
and then we'll put the ruler in like a so to give it some rigidity and then uh, one last thing is we'll put in um, some candy we'll uh, we'll do some candies to send out I gotta figure out something better with the live chat though because I can't seem to monitor live chat no matter what I do all right I've got this a tablet now just sitting here um, it's better than me back and forth to the PC which is basically just out of sight okay um, what was the other order I gotta check my phone here for a sec um, what was the other order we have this order for a rescue kit no camera so I do have a camera option and stuff with the rescue it's just a ESP32 camera but uh, they didn't order that and we have one DIY Roomba virtual wall kit um, and that is from my videos if you guys have been a long time subscriber I just started making these kits recently because everybody always asks even when I post the links they want to know where to get the parts and then they always ask do you sell the parts because people don't like buying them from eBay and stuff when they aren't really comfortable with it so I started making these nifty little kits and yeah 3d printed enclosure we're gonna we're on to the blue now I'm really partial to this kind of it's not smurf blue but it's kind of neat so one Roomba virtual wall kit we will all it's in it is um, um, Arduino Nano and um, load dropping uh, current limiting resistor uh, I give two uh, IR LEDs in my kits because why not have a spare that's the thing that people seem to have trouble getting their hands on or are scared to buy or whatever so um, I throw two in there and then um, the 3d printed enclosure and some wire and yeah they're all set so that'll be just like so and we'll package that up with a shipping label and we'll be all set one view is back to front what like you're talking yeah I don't know mm, it's are they flipped? Could be. Is that flipped? It is. Um, do I want to fix that? I never even noticed. We can fix that. Um... I can fix that next broadcast if it's if it's distracting. Which probably it will be now that you've pointed it out. Um, but yeah, the wide is yeah, that's tough. All right, cool. I didn't. If I flip it left isn't gonna be left anymore when I transit left or right it's gonna be inverted compared to each other um, because yeah I don't know why that is huh yeah look at that now I'm puzzled that's strange because it's not inverted but it's flipped it's weird yeah OBS settings it is what it is it's not distracting. Yeah, I can definitely flip it. Okay, cool. As long as it's not distracting. It's not a camera that you're gonna see um, anything where you could um, where you could do much, where you can read, because it's just the wide angle shot. But yeah, we can look at it. Um, save the rulers. Uh, I think PCBWay is sending me some more rulers. I just put in an order for. Um, I made a breakout for uh, the Pi Pico. Um, I made one for the Pico, uh, which I made wrong. Um, it's inverted, 
So it's just a, a breakout to all screw terminals along the sides, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's already in my GitHub if you want to see it, but don't have it fabbed yet. The Gerbers haven't been tested. So this um, ends up pointing out over a proto area that I made on the board with uh, uh, all spare proto holes. So what I've done in V2, which I haven't ordered yet, is flip it. And then um, I had to get some screw terminals. Maybe you guys know where to get some. So what happened is I ordered um, 10 and 8. So for the I made one for the Wemos D1 Mini as well. Um, because I've always wanted a nice little breakout for the D1 Mini. And uh, I ordered the 8 for it and the 10. But look at the size of these things. They're tiny. These are our standard pin pitch. Little tiny suckers. And what I designed it for was these um, in my footprints. So these I have some of, but I don't have eight and 10 and I'm not, I'm torn. Like these are pretty cool, but they're expensive. So these would be pretty nice alongside the, the, the pie because they wouldn't, they would cut down the size of the board significantly because they're actually just a matching pitch. So I wish I could screen share or send you a link. Um, my stream deck won't let me, but uh, basically what I did is I have this soldered to the board uh, or, or socketed onto headers. And then I have another row of headers for jumpers, uh, either male or female, whatever you choose. And then outside of that are these but the big version and I think I'll remake it with the small version and then the proto area up top so you can uh, permanently mount this and uh, yeah it's pretty cool uh, pretty handy but more likely I'm going to use the Wemos D1 Mini one more but I wanted a Pipeco one because what the heck when you're sponsored by a PCB board manufacturer you should have some boards made once in a while which I don't do terribly often, but if you know a good source to buy these cheaper or these, uh, if you don't mind, throw it in my Discord. Um, these came from Amazon. It's getting difficult. Well, it's New Year right now too in China, but um, if you know, I don't even know how to tell them apart uh, when I'm ordering them terribly easy. The descriptions are quite bad. So, but I would like these in an eight and a 10 block and then um, a cheaper source to find these small ones. So, yeah. Oh, I guess I'd have some more. Push comes to shove, I could maybe stack them, right? Can you just put these end to end and have them butt up tight? And still be... S oh, they do lock. They have a little tiny... I know it's going to be hard on this camera. They have um, a little incy wincy. Where are you? Hello. There, a little slot down the side. And the other has a, a raised nub. Looks like they could just slot together. Okay. Manufact oh, they can too! Look at that, they do lock. Learned something new today. <laughs> I've never played with these before. So I guess I don't need to order the eights or the tens you guys are probably screaming it in the chat right now i don't have to order the eights or the tens i just order a whole bunch of these twos and just slot them together right come on chat <laughs> cheers andy <laughs> oh, a couple of beers eh? it's gotta be it's gotta be uh beer time over there Oh, yeah, another one. Um, Patreon supporters will be probably seeing this in a mailbag this week, I'd imagine. Got myself one of these. Um, one, uh, an Arduino that I never would have purchased otherwise. I would never have given this thing a second glance. The I remember when they came out, the Nano 33 BLA, and I thought, what the heck would I want an Arduino Nano form factor BLE board when I could just use the ESP lineup, the expressive. I now have a use for this. This natively is supported in TinyML. 
um, in the edge uh, machine learning uh, interface to program this with the accelerometer. It's an ARM Cortex, I think, M0 on board. And it, the accelerometer can be used for machine learning. And I think it, does it have a microphone on board or do you have to add it? Can't remember. Uh, but it, you can actually do tiny machine learning on this board. So we're gonna try that. And that's the, the use for these too. I, I have very little interest in doing like Arduino type projects with this. Um, I'll do a couple of videos for OLEDs and stuff. But this ARM Cortex supports machine learning as well, or is supported by external tensor programming for machine learning. And I've been, I started my own Git repo just trying to get my head around all of this, and I'm learning a ton. Um, you can check my, in my Git repo all the links to all this stuff, and I'm just, my brain is just like a sponge right now. Richie's Radio Room with a $2 super chat. And I, you have a button for them. <laughs> Thank you, Richie's Radio Room. That was very nice of you. You are a, a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> and I made a button just for you. <laughs> oh, the other thing that's live too, if you guys want to play with it, I think uh, if we spam it, we'll have to shut it down. If you go to this, uh, if you've been a subscriber forever, like going back nearly a decade, I built this long, long time ago. This is the uh, electric imp microcontroller that's currently on my Wi-Fi and hooked to a thermal printer. This is, uh, uh, the back end is linked to my website. So if you go to mkme.org slash imp imp for the electric imp, there's a web interface where you can send chat messages to that. Um, there's very little I can do for spam protection on that. So uh, I did prevent people from copying and pasting a Bible into it, but that's the extent of the protection I have. <laughs> so, uh, if, if we go through too much paper, we'll have to shut it off. But yeah, all right, we're winning. And a whole bunch of kit inventory came in. Um, I think we're ready to make Tonight I'm going to make some um, Roomba virtual walls and we'll need some Arduino Nanos for that. These came uh, ultra cheap from overseas. Um, actually, I'll wait and get them out later. Uh, a whole bunch of relays came. Check these out. Um, I also made kits for the ESP8266 um, relay modules. These are all in my store. You can go to store.makeme.org and look at the custom section. And uh, but the these were ultra ultra cheap. Um, this was cheaper than buying the relay, so I bought a whole raft of them. Um, I doubt I'll send sell many kits because honestly, um, I tell people you can just buy um, buy a, a sawn off instead cheaper because the kit's like gonna be 20 some odd bucks by the time i put a wemos d1 and and these in but and ship but uh now i got all kinds of them so i don't know what we'll do some fun projects i think some relay projects and stuff and good 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 um, streaming yeah still not working the chat interface still isn't working. Um, no. If anybody knows how to make this work, that's really frustrating. That's what I really wanted to be able to post right into chat with you guys. So I need to fix that, but um, we're in pretty good shape otherwise. We can do uh, all kinds of cool sound effects. <laughs> Hey, Steven. Cheers. Steven. Steven, you have Stream Deck, but you stream on Twitch. How do I fix this? Steven Kibberton here. He is a pro Twitch streamer from many, many moons ago and a long time subscriber. Do you know how to fix this? Yellow triangles posting. 
I've reinstalled, reauthenticated a dozen times. Oh, yeah, I love it too. I'm so excited. That's why we're testing this out. It's like game changing. Now I can just one press and I can be live with you guys and I'll actually stream more and hang out more. But damned if I can get that to work. Everything else is working flawlessly. The multifunctions, I got it all figured out. But that chat to YouTube, I cannot make it work. I posted in there. Um, I posted in their uh, uh, Reddit uh, API, but uh, subreddit, but it looks pretty inactive. So I don't foresee. Um, um, I was about to auth issue, but yeah, I tried the auth. I re authed on the PC numerous times, two different YouTube accounts, uh, reinstalled the software. Re just removed that the YouTube functionality, reinstalled it, remade the buttons. Uh, I've tried uh, private event, unlisted event, and this now this public event, and I can't get anything to post. It just I get that yellow triangle, and that yellow triangle shows up in the back end too, the Stream Deck back end. Um, and you open YouTube, and I'm authenticated. Everything's fine. Like I don't, yeah, it's weird. Pilot stuff is here. Cheers, another fellow electronics YouTuber. Um, yeah, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is just a fun hangout and test with you guys. So, last live stream we got these working. Um, I built that cap substitution box live on the stream. The low end of the scale on the capacitors is pretty pretty dodgy they're pretty dodgy caps they're they're way off in their in their numbers so they're <laughs> pretty rough but all the top end was really good there it's working good now so i'm pretty happy with that but yeah that's where we are um okay what were we gonna do we were gonna oh yeah let's uh let's solder up should we solder up uh the pie i want to get making a couple of videos on this so um, let's, uh, yeah, good question. What, what beer is Pile of Stuff having? Surely he's got a tasty port or, or something or something tasty from Alberta beers. think there's anything in here that's going to dox myself so this is <laughs> this is my bin I don't know whether any of you guys do this too but this is how I function I never take a main project apart so if I need to do uh, Arduinos with OLEDs I just grab this out of the box to prototype this is my urban kitchen garden um, prototype that I just, there's no reason for this to stay together, but um, the color uh, LCD, I just don't want to have to wire up the SPI every time. I hate wiring SPI, I'm just lazy. No, no good reason beyond my laziness. And uh, uh, that's the strobe project, but I think, we might as well start a a new one for the pie, uh, I guess. I think one of these was actually burnt up. But uh, these are cool little power supply nubbins for the breadboard. They're handy. Uh, yeah, we could use that one. But yeah, I never take anything off the breadboards, at least not for the main stuff. And I can just grab it out and play with it quickly. Buried underneath is even more. That's uh, for the gas sensor grenade project prototype. There's the actual gas sensor grenade. Won uh, fourth place in the Hackaday Prize 2015. That's a fun project. Um. Steven said, yeah, it will show on both screens. Okay, Steven still hasn't coming back. 
cool. And I had to build my own chat bot. The YouTube chat API is so damn limiting. Yeah, I'm, I've been trying. I did try that too. I tried different, um, different chat uh, characters. And this is the other thing. Um, back to that stream deck. This is also acting funny. This in this is supposed to be a uh, live amount of chatters and it's stuck at zero. Like this, the interface in the back end with the API is clearly broken for whatever reason, but I don't know if it's something I can fix on my end because uh, I've tried the same thing, tried re authenticating and dicking around with it and no luck. So, yet. Um. <laughs> Is the printer web link working? Um, it should be. It was. Oh crap! Resend whatever you did. The printer was dorked. Um, yes, it. Uh, go to makeme.org/imp and try again. That was my fault. This. I think it was. It might have been the way I fed it. Try sending the message a couple of times. I think if I line feed it sometimes. You can I can't zoom on this, and this is really shoddily put together. Ah, oh, here you go. Um, oh, hey. just cut it. That's what ended up happening. It got cut off halfway, so uh, I should have it line feed some more. But I don't want it chewing through all the paper on just a few messages. There, that message went through. And we've got a hello from Bujats, Bujats, <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, that one worked. So sure enough, silly old project, but it was a lot of fun. We used to play with it on the live streams years ago, <laughs> many many years ago. Yeah, yeah it was. It's, it's neat. It just keeps spitting out. So everything, that, once the messages start piling up, I don't have to line feed it every time, and I'll be able to see them and just read them live on the air if <laughs> if they're readable. We never really had any problems. Makers are a good bunch of people. We we never we had once where someone uh, decided to test the uh, character limit and copied and pasted the like St. James Bible into it. It <laughs> it did try. Uh, so we, we character limited it after that. My friend uh, John Engelsman helped me out and put character limits on it. Um, uh, oh, Nightbot showed up still. Well, yay. Thank you, Nightbot. Huh, interesting. Um, yeah, got it. Okay, well, let's... Let's put the OLEDs away and put things back on camera. Well, that, um, yeah, this, I have lots of other breadboards, but this bin is getting too full, so let's use this and let's do up a Arduino. So apparently. Andy's Unicode or something didn't come through properly <laughs> and Richie's radio room is here Richie's radio room dot com howdy awesome yeah that's working good wish my stream deck worked that good like like 10 years in the bin and I pull this what's shocking is the back end is still alive this electric imp is a SD card I gotta be really careful here because everything is really dodgy. But that is an SD card form factor, basically precursor to the ESP8266. Uh, I they might have come around at the same time, but it run. It, you put the code on their server. It, it's a web database or a web GUI thing. So basically, they have to stay up forever for this thing to work, and they have. The Budweiser Goal Light things, they run this this card. And Electric Imp, actually, I contacted them because I got the Goal Light and I was intrigued by the microcontroller and they, they sure, they just, they just uh, sent it over. Uh, <laughs> Andy dumping stuff into the, 
right to the printer. Okay, thank you, Steven. So Steven in chat says he is getting the same error on his. So I do not feel half as bad now if a pro like Steven is having the same problem. It must be must be their the actual Stream Deck program, the back end must be broken, the link to the API. So Yes, Steven, you did help on that too. You worked on the imp project, the web code as well. I think you did the original web code, didn't you? I can't even remember. I remember you and John both helped me out on that. So yeah, software issue. Hmm, okay. Well, now we know. Everything else is working. Um, all the other functionality, I think um, I've gotten everything. All the happy, happy stuff and some silly, some silly gifs or gifs, depending on who you ask. And yeah, all I really wanted was the ability to acknowledge super chats and really acknowledge super chats with the big one and other and and the chat interaction and the ability to just press buttons and go live. That's that's what I really wanted and be able to toggle cameras. I think what I'll do is I'll set up another. Um, uh, forward facing camera I have a C922 camera as well that I could set up that might be kind of cool to have all three angles covered but this is and then I can also like this is this is over to the HDMI micro my big microscope that that like for, for SMD soldering and stuff that can go right in and do all kinds of stuff and then I can also, like the one we used earlier, the USB micro is sitting here all the time, which is right at the front of the bench here. And it's super, like, boom, I just go between them. It's game changer. This this makes me want to, to actually stream, even though you, the content probably sucks. Um, it gives me the ability to, to hang out with you guys. So, um, I just remembered, we don't get headers with the, uh, Pi Pico do it, so we're gonna have to supply our own. Oh, it was from Groucho Marx. <laughs> yeah, that's that was even predating me a tiny bit. Uh, wasn't I? I what did watch some Groucho Marx when I was a kid, but that's before my time even. <laughs> Great to catch up. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. I really appreciate your help on that for testing your stream deck. That that's like that's beyond awesome, man. I at least now I know I can just stop fighting with my equipment and just kind of wait and hopefully they'll put out an update the XL is good too yeah I wanted I debated the XL but I didn't think I'd have enough space on my bench here it turns out I, I kind of do um, I probably would have been okay with the XL but this is okay for me I only need this stuff being able to, to quickly go between these and I have an NDI source for my laptop that we can pull up to do programming with the Arduino um, or, or anything, um, except that the NDI is not working here through my router setup. There's like a three second delay, but it does work. So, and then I have a be right back screen and stuff and intro and outro. And I've buried all my OBS stuff under its own folder here. So I don't accidentally stop the stream and yeah, I'm super happy. I'm really, 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 really happy with it to be honest, but I'm not a streamer. So. Um, but I'll try and hang out with you guys whenever I can now. This makes it a lot, a lot easier when you don't have to do any setup, just press a button. It makes it so much simpler. Alright, so we need some headers. Uh, what was that thing that looks like the blob? On the stream deck? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, generic blue tag. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a chunk of gener uh, dollar store blue tag sitting on the base of the microscope. That's what I use to glue the boards down to the um, the big trinocular microscope over here. It's just off to the side now. I finally gave it a home, and then the blue tag just sticks on the 
on the uh, build plate like I saw and then when I stick a raspberry pie to it it doesn't jiggle around when I solder to it uh, that one's getting less sticky now but yeah uh, generic blue tack but not blue there's some pieces of it stuck to this <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is and <laughs> pretty sure it came from the dollar store though everything I have comes from the dollar store I'm cheap like that and of course my tablet timed out on the chat again I gotta figure out the chat that's the one thing I really gotta do is figure out how I can keep a chat window open that I can actually interact with you guys <laughs> chewing gum <laughs> chew tack <laughs> yeah close enough yeah I got lots of headers um, actually I ordered a pile more um, I ordered some more of these nifty round ones these are cool those are handy for them some things and then I accidentally ordered these uh, the 2 by 2 uh, I don't know what the hell I'll ever use those for but something somewhere and then of course there's the bin of shame where when you don't look at the the actual the product description I have no idea what size and pitch those are but I have never seen it on any any equipment really I have just never seen these that is an oddball it's like the inside of a of a proper connector but not as a header so yeah whatever bin of shame uh, Eureka it works from John Jones on the printer <laughs> let's see if this works <laughs> yeah it does indeed Maggie. let's see about choppy chop I'll get a couple um do I need this footage I think I do crap hold on I gotta set up a camera um, I need to well I need to practice doing this too if I'm gonna stream when I'm down here 99% of the time when I'm down here I am filming so I need to get better at taking b-roll while I'm streaming to the internets um, and this is like I'm not good at it put it that way but I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night no I didn't but I did just get totally freaking lucky and somehow ended up that those headers are perfectly cut in half and the right length so there we go and getting some footage on the DSLR hopefully there's something useful I just need the b-roll to show if I do it oh yeah somebody's sending garbage so there's the character limit <laughs> of yeah. Yeah, from bug rats. Lots of characters. Alright, shut that off. This is too much for my brain to handle right now. I'm juggling two cameras. <laughs> too much like work. Alright, let's move this camera. Put this camera down. What do we got? Uh cheers. Hey Dirk, cheers. need to send you a video sure send me a video sounds good um, does your camera do anything clever is it HDMI to an Elgato and into the OBS oh cheers curry kitten ah, another youtuber all the youtubers are here today um, no I don't have anything clever with my cameras my cameras are strictly um, yeah C920 C920 and my DSLR here that is still recording because I'm an idiot um, that's not hooked to anything that's just for taking my YouTube videos I have a macro lens that is the extent well it's not even a macro lens it's just a magnifier that I use on the DSLR for my electronic shots that's it <laughs> nothing 
Nothing clever at all. I, I don't do clever. MP 20 years. Oh yeah, for sure. You're right. Yes. If I throw them suckers away, I will have I will have some project, some some display header in I'm freaking PC or something that'll be melted and burnt and those will be the perfect size for it and then I would have just thrown them away the night before. Yes. 100% agree. Um, no, 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 no DSLR integration. I do have the the big microscope over here, the the big monster. It is uh, HDMI out through uh, an Elgato um, uh, interface to the PC, and I have another Elgato uh, HDMI um, capture uh, for. Um, capturing my VR footage which I almost never do on the camera here so I could hook them up but this PC is an ancient piece of junk this like I'm streaming at um, um, uh, what's the the bitrate uh, as is set at 2000 which is insanely low but that is quite literally all it can do without completely pooping itself so, yeah, it's unfortunate. It is what it is, though. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Should we... I'm going to try to solder over two cameras. How about that? What could possibly go wrong? Oh, yeah, and this is the other board. Check this out. This Pi board? That's a F4, STM32 F405 on there. So, Curry Kitten will recognize that. That's pretty common microcontroller that we use in the flying machines or used to be and this thing uh, I got up and running on um, MicroPython 2 in in a blink this is designed is called the Pi board or um, yeah, yeah it's called Pi board um, PY not PI and uh, yeah it works it works just bloody great it's pretty cool and it's a STM32 F4 so like that's a bloody powerful little sucker so yeah kind of fun all right, focus. Um, video. All right. Trying to stay on two cameras simultaneously is hard. Like, really hard. What? We'll give her a go. Yeah, I'm not I'm not totally in love with the Pi Pico or anything. I'm not going to be a fanboy by any stretch, but uh, we are going to definitely try and integrate it. And I'm really excited to try the machine learning on it. Really excited. I can't wait to give that a go. Come on, don't bend. Oh, what the hell? Well, that's surprising. I pulled up, pulled the header apart. Man, some of these breadboards are tight. I wanted to take it out. Um, tasty tidbit. You generally want to take your boards back out of the breadboard before you go solder the whole headers. Because what will happen is it will bloody melt the damn breadboard and melt itself right in. But in this case today, it wants to just pull the pins out. So we'll solder them all. It's fine. Um, nope. I think that's it for... Did my chat die? Uh, Pico's not bad for the price. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not. It's a capable little microcontroller. And I think where we see this go is going to be quite interesting. You know what? If I'm gonna be live streaming, I might as well. What's going on here? Did I hit the button? When do I do that? Uh, if I'm gonna be live streaming, I might as well show you guys what I'm doing. Let's uh, let's grab the grab the microscope so you can see a little better. We'll put the headers away because if I don't, I'm gonna dump them all over the floor, guaranteed. 
because that's how I roll. And this gives me an excuse to try out my reach. This has always been a problem. The soldering iron's way over here, and this big beast is um, rather difficult to move around, but I think we're good. Let's try that. Move our chewing gum, as you guys put it. A little focus. We certainly don't need to be under a microscope to solder these, but why not? It will look a hell of a lot better for you guys. It also makes every solder joint look like absolute dog crap on camera. <laughs> the detail level is crazy. But why not? Gotta feed the troll somehow, right? Now the only thing that gets me sometimes is the field of view that I have through this microscope is way wider than what you guys see. So sometimes I end up off camera with it. So again, a good reason that I just need to practice. One way to practice is to just start live streaming and hang out with you guys. Um, am I a ham? No, I'm not licensed. Uh, I've been meaning to finish my... Ah! Nearly got me. That sucker, look at that. That little guy popped up when I was pulling the board apart. There. He tried to trick me. Is there any more? Oh, that's it. That's the cool thing about having a trinocular microscope, right? I have depth perception good depth perception the camera is actually separate from this camera is through its own uh, whatever you call optics and then I have my true binocular for my eyes so I don't lose my depth perception by going to a camera that's the key is if you're getting a, a microscope get yourself a trinocular but uh, uh, anyway to your question no I'm not a ham I've been meaning to write the damn test for well you guys have been around for a while Steven will probably say I was talking about it like what seven years ago here on the channel and so I don't do any projects that require transmitting only receiving and uh, yeah I uh, when COVID hit I'm like all right well now I can't do the exam and then conveniently I actually found an examiner in my town they finally registered for it and I went to uh, study up and do the test and honestly like I even bought the silly cheat sheet book and I just can't I can't bring myself to studying useless stats like the older I get, I look everything up for work. When I go into a meeting, when it's a multi-million dollar mess up, I won't give answers on the spot. I'll say, I got to go look that up. Or I, I'll get back to you with an answer on whatever thing. I do not want to memorize bloody <laughs> transmission stats. And even the band plan, I look it up. I look at the damn poster and trying to memorize every single limit of the different um, areas of the bands like no <laughs> I will look it up if I'm gonna need to transmit on on 140 megahertz well I'm gonna look it up <laughs> before I dare transmit even a milliwatt so anyway I couldn't bring myself to I just got frustrated and the book stayed down. It turned out I couldn't do the test anyway because we were in lockdown. So, but someday I will. I just, yeah, I'm just not that interested in talking to people. I'm an antisocial guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, more than seven years. Yeah, I, you have to go back on the. Ch it's been a long, bloody time. Holy man, I've been on the YouTube's a while, which is why I have the subscriber count I do but in reality there's only a handful like uh, about about 
14 or 1500 people that actually watch my videos. Um, the rest is just, I don't know, old accounts or something that haven't been purged. Like, or people that just don't care about... My content's all over the place, right? This YouTube channel is not the right way to do a YouTube channel. Never do a YouTube channel like this with all these silly projects from drones to raspberry pies to 3D printing. It's just... There's a core group of us that we like that kind of stuff, but the vast majority of people don't. <laughs> uh, they just lose interest. So. Um... Did you? Did it take you long to solder under using a scope? A certain amount of disconnect. No, no, there's no disconnect. That's why. That's why you get that trinocular microscope. This is this. This is what you want. This scope is in my recommended gear link down below. Um, this I got from AliExpress, but this is the same one that Strange Parts Scotty did. Um, I bought it from the same vendor on Ali, and with the trinocular, you're looking you're looking through, and there's no delay. There's with the USB microscope over there, there's a lag, and that's intolerable soldering. But with True Optics, there's it's it's wonderful, and the depth perception with the trinocular is perfect. You, there's no I had a binocular and it was horrible. I would, the depth perception isn't there. But with the try, like you saw that solder up, I was going slow because I'm talking throughout it. But overall, the the results are like those are. Well, I haven't looked at them off camera. Those are n near perfect joints. They're yeah, and just motor along, no problem. No slop, no mess, no no muss, no fuss. Except my damn tablet shutting off. God sakes, I need something better. Another. You like the randomness? <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm big on random. I get bored with a single project. I can't. I can't do static. I can't do the same thing. I gotta be playing with something else. Um, I gotta stay interested. I can't even stay interested for more than days on end before I go to another microcontroller. And if I make a video in between, it's a miracle. Um, stick to one subject. Yeah, you have to, Andy. That's you. You have to on on here. Um, uh, random makes it more real. Yeah, like I have all my projects back over here. This is the kind of wall of shame back here of quadcopter, INAV, planes, quad electronics, FPV systems, 110 volt project parks, Game Boy and retro gaming, which I've never gotten around to making videos, all my aquarium stuff for my, um, my coral reef aquariums that the, only my patrons have seen. Like, I am, I am the most schizophrenic maker I guess you could say but I'm okay with it it keeps me interested I go from machine learning one minute to this stuff to to this strange Wemos 32 and then uh, next up when I do the machine learning which will be this then I'm also at the same time gonna play with this co2 sensor and see about um, some air quality stuff not for the COVID stuff like Adafruit has been doing um, I wanted to do it because in my, um, uh, I have a reef tank upstairs, a 30 gallon saltwater reef, and I just put some like, kind of expensive corals in it. I didn't pay a lot of money for them, I got them on clearance, but I don't want to kill them. Um, coral reefs are really sensitive, and a 30 gallon nano cube inside, I, I have it fully automated, it's completely controlled all different lighting, pH monitoring, everything, but I have pH swings that I'm controlling by buffering it with a refugium, but I think the pH is reacting to the CO2 in the air because you get carbonic acid buildup, and this will allow me to prove it, and I can do a data logger and see what the correlation there is, and then a simple ventilate the house. But ventilating the house costs money. Um, when it's minus 20 outside, so <laughs> um, I want to find out is it a CO2 buildup that's causing my pH to drop? Um, and then I'll know. Yeah, so. Um, I 
I have a retro game, Res 4 PS2. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have a, I did a Pi build here. I never did a, a video on it, sadly, um, of a complete um, retro Pi setup. And it's out in my, my main room out there um, with my big screen TV. And I have a little wireless controller, and it's it's hilarious, like Turbo Graphics 16 and everything. It's, it, it works good. It works really good. Like second best use for a Raspberry Pi is retro gaming. Second best use. First best. First by far, bar none. Pi hole. I have a Pi hole set up here um, on the house. The, all that my entire network goes. It's the DNS server for my network, and the, by far the best use for Raspberry Pi. Also, uh, I have the with the Pi set up that way. I use it for code testing and um, when I need to play with Python in a native like uh, Python friendly environment, I just SSH. I just open Putty and just jump into the Pi and do it there, which is pretty cool. But uh, that's handy. Yeah. Um, could you use? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can. Um, you can use pH buffers on the reef tank, but it's highly undesirable. You want the tank to be stable. You want to. In a reef, fluctuations are the death of corals. That's why coral bleaching and the reefs are dying because we fricked up the environment so bad. They have no hope. They're they're really sensitive. So you can treat it, you can treat the symptom, but you have to fix the underlying cause. So on for the pH problem, what I have is in the back of the, the tank, I have some LEDs um, fed by um, some power supplies, and then I have those on a ESP8266 now on a timer. And I've got the light cycle now that when the main lights go down, when the sun goes down in the main tank, and it does go down, it has twilight and changes colors and everything. And when it goes down, the other lights come up. And that way the refugium then is alive and the, it's catomorpha, it's seagrass in there, and it buffers the pH in the tank. And it's working good, but uh, I still have a little bit too much fluctuation what makes electronics work if you let the smoke if you let the smoke out the electronics comp yeah they do the smoke keeps the electronics going <laughs> i'm surprised this, i still can't believe that this thing still works eh? after that many years i pulled it out of the the tote that it was in i plug it in their back end is still up my account i haven't logged into it like ever <laughs> in half a decade or more I can't believe that's still up. It's pretty cool. I'm happy about that. It's a fun toy. Um, all right, I think I'm caught up. I think. Oh yeah, we were doing B-roll. Dust B-roll. Do you want to see? Here. Um, let's do. So this is just the um, plus four. Uh, plus four. Uh, 58 mil lens and I use this when you see those um, kind of crisp electronic shots that don't happen terribly often on my channel because I suck but the the real crispy up close shots are from this which I seem to be inept enough to not be able to thread it on perfect and it's just the 18 to 55 um, kit lens on there and we we do some things like so. I'm gonna do a little bit of a slow. Can you even see that? Nope. You cannot. There. And that's like really tight zoom, right? Because of the magnifier. It's not pretty, and it's all over the place but that's how I roll and we'll do this good got it that's enough by the time this airs because I'm way slow at everything compared to everyone else everyone in their bloody world will be completely sick of Raspberry Pi and no one will want to see the video. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a CO2 sensor. Cut up. Um, we need. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys can vote if you want. What? Um. Oh, Stephen's sending me some stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Whatever it is, I'm sure it will be of great help. It will be streaming stuff appreciate that. Um, so what I'm thinking is um, I want to do a display video because I haven't seen many display videos for the Pi yet and because I want to I want to have a display available for it so what I'm thinking is to just use one of these, um, which that one has been damaged. Hmm, <laughs> it's not stuck. Glass has moved over. The sticky is not stuck. There. Should we do one of these or should we do the big square one? I think we should do one of these. These are an underused display, the um, little organic LED. Or we can do one of the one of these ones. I don't know. Which one would you guys rather see hooked up and working? I think we'll get it working with MicroPython. Which one would you rather see? Um, I don't know. Either way is the same amount of work, pretty much. They're both I squared C instead of SPI. I think it'd be fun to do that one personally, but I'll switch if you guys think we should do the 128 by 64 bigger one. Um, but otherwise, we'll do that one. Love these. These are my life. These trays. <laughs> Got all my things, all the goodies in them. It's just so great to have everything in stock now and just be able to build anything and just, it's fun being able to go live and share it with you guys too, but that's the end of the imp. All caught up. Well, I think that's enough for today. I think I will try to figure out what's going on with the Elgato and I will finish up the video on this or, or start get this up and going and then then I will start trying to program it with machine learning and that will be a lot of fun and if I can't make that work then we'll go to this this is tried improvement this is uh, this is supported in the edge platform with, with the tensors so we can we can definitely program that but yeah thanks for hanging out guys that was a lot of fun hope you guys uh, have a good rest of your weekend click a thumbs up on your way out and uh, yeah, talk to you again soon I had to do it.